That you had never dated brown chicks before me. Wow. Let me see. Is that true? That's what you told me. I think that and might be true. And you were very awkward when you told me. What do you mean I was awkward? You were like... That was, that was a conversation. <laughs> it sounds like a prepubescent boy trying to like chat up a girl for the first time. I mean... I- <laughs> <laughs> when really translated means I think you're very cute will you go out on a date with me and I would like to uh, kiss you uh, th- that's not really what you said but okay. no I just translated it and that, I'm telling you that's not what the moment was said to me hey everybody you're listening to God Spice with Greg and Kathy Bye. Welcome back to a new season and episode of Got Spice. That's right. Episode number two, season three. Oh, Gregory, you got it right. I know. I'm very good with numbers under five. Yeah. And you also, I think, like to live in the past. Well, you know what I found? I found as long as... I think as it's you, man disease. No, no. I found as long as you could memorize the numbers zero through nine... You could do any combination you ever want to, whether it's millions, gazillions, gabillions. Right, thank, thank you, mathematician. That's all you need to know is just the numbers zero through nine. Mm. That's it. I'm so amazed. You know, you don't have to learn anything else. It's crazy. I mean, it's we amazing. don't even need to use our brain anymore because everything is done for us, even with ChatGPT. I know. And like other systems. I mean, Anyone who loves like there's like Bard out there, it. which it is might, great for writing. It and... might calculate it wrong, but you know what? You'll think you're really <sighs> right. Actually, that's a great. So it's. Interesting you're saying that about calculating incorrectly. So Kirthi and I have both been utilizing AI in the workplace for several years now. Yeah. I was recently having a conversation that articles that I had written back in 2015, 2016 are still relevant today that are we're resurfacing them because the industry hasn't necessarily progressed in its usage since yeah. that time to now. Well, no, I think, I think there is some adaptation occurring now, finally. Where people are finding smart ways to leverage AI. They, um, they are. Not necessarily, I think, at the vast commercial usage that mm-hmm. I would have imagined a decade later. But yes. certainly there are instances like I'm really proud of the company I've just recently started at. Mm-hmm. We are intelligently finding ways to apply AI in a meaningful way in the oh, things that we're doing. Really? So... AI, you've been using it for a long time. A mm-hmm. lot of doing a lot of cool things. You were at an AI company, like right, like before you joined the current private markets company you're at. Uh, they were using AI, uh, I think, we were, to create ETFs. Yeah, and stuff. we were. The company was creating ETFs utilizing AI to help build the portfolio under each ETF. Mm-hmm. And. That's as far as I want to go with that conversation. His co- he he also cannot say any more. Yeah, because you'll be arrested. Probably worse than that. I'll arrest you. No, we're in a world of who knows what happens Are you? when you disclose company secrets. Oh my goodness! It's like the company store. We don't do that. You work there. Oops. You work there. You buy the company product. You hang with the company people, and you forget that you have a family. Okay, this sounds like the John Grisham book, The Firm. Oh, it's kind of like The Firm. But really, I was thinking more just like... I think I've been making you watch too many pharma movies lately. We have been watching some pharma movies. Like, it's just mm. a lot of movies out about bad pharma. Yeah, it makes you not want to touch an opioid. Oh, I can't even speak. It makes you not want to touch an <laughs> opioid. <laughs> I can't even speak now, like thinking about it. But what's crazy, we were, so we were just watching this new show. We watched Dope Sick last, what, two years ago? It was a few years ago now, And then yeah, with we Michael just Keaton. watched, yeah, with, uh, uh, with Matthew Broderick, Painkiller. Mm-hmm. And so, which we were just chatting, and it sort of has an abrupt ending. But what was crazy is that a few years ago, I had severely injured my back. Yes. Um, saving a friend and his child out oh, in the lake. I think lake. that's t- like not eight years ago. It's, 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 it could be around eight years ago now. Yeah. yeah. I think, and yeah, because we were just friends then. We and were, I remember correct. you just disappeared for a whole summer. Yeah. I, uh, a friend, we were uh, in a very large lake, one of the largest lakes on the uh, Northeast. And he was out with his son and he was on a paddleboard. Ended up taking a paddleboard without the, uh, without the plug 
in it. So while they were out, probably a solid Wait, 200 the yards out. Board. Like meaning like the water hole plug? Yeah, like when you're on a paddleboard, you know, you stand and you yeah. kind of like, you know, paddle your way. But someone had that set up he, he, for someone to go paddleboard and drown themselves? Well, no, no. You can, because just in case it gets water in Sounds it. Sounds sinister yes. to me. So he, he, I believe he knew, but he just figured I'll take it out a little bit and it would be fine, I think. So like, now he knew? So this so story I think gets so. worse. It gets worse. So they're about like 200 yards out. And all of a sudden oh I hear him God. yelling for me. And I could just, I, it's a friend of mine that I've known my entire life. This calls and for some seltzer sip. So seltzer sip. And I could just hear the tone in his voice that just there was something wrong the way he was yelling for help. So I'm right along the lakeside. So all of a sudden I look down at the edge You're of the in water. In the boondoggles? In the boondoggles. But no, no, I'm, I'm by the house. And so I'm right at the lakeside. I'm looking out there. I'm looking down. I'm like, what do I have to get out to help him? And I'm thinking, okay, there's a couple other paddle boards, but they're for like kids. They could probably support at most like 40, 50 pounds. And I am almost 200 pounds, right? Full of muscle, as we know. And so muscular. So muscular. And then I'm looking at a couple kayaks. I heard muscle weighs more than fat. Well, that's actually a fallacy. It all weighs the <laughs> same amount. It's all about the density and the mass. Is it really? Yes, yes. Oh. Technically, technically. Personal trainer, Gregory. Yes, yes. So, and so uh, all of a sudden I look down, there's like a couple kayaks, four kids. So I decide to go down. And meanwhile, there's this other, like rain the night before, there's this canoe. Wait, I'm imagining this. Can I just paint the picture I'm imagining? Yes. There's like a dad with a kid on a out, paddle board. Out in the water. That he chose to take out there. Mm -hmm. With a hole in it versus mm -hmm. let me just put the plug in it and take it out. And they both have life jackets on too. And they have life jackets on. But still it's but scary. Then we I have, think his son was two at the time. We have big man, muscular Greg yes. going out uh, on a child's kayak that's going to sink under his ass well, while he goes to row out there well, to save them. So that's a good picture, but we didn't even get that far yet. I am I just painted it. Well, you just painted it. So I head down to the water, like run down to the water I see that the paddle boards like these things aren't going to support my weight. Then I go to the the ch the child kayak. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm thinking that this thing is just it's I'm going to flip over more than likely. But I'm like, be positive, be positive. I put it in the water. I get in this thing. It instantly goes right over, and then it just fills with water and goes to the bottom. Big man yeah. goes in child kayak. And it's like five foot of water, so it just goes down. Over. So all of a sudden, I look back. I look back on shore, and there's a canoe. A, an adult canoe, but the reason why I didn't go for that one first is because it had rained the night before and whoever had brought it up from the water hadn't turned it over. So it was upside down. It was right side full up. Full of water. So it was on a full of water. So I go up, I run up back up to like the shoreline, try to grab this thing. <laughs> Sorry, I, I need to ask a question. Yes. Where the heck is everyone else in this story? There's a bunch of people that happened to be, I think some people went golfing, other people weren't at the house and it was just like a few of us there and then he's out in the water. So then, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. so then I go, so I run up to the canoe. I'm like, okay, this thing, I run back down to the water and just hurt. Like, as I say, sometimes you can have like Herculean strength. Like you hear that these stories of women whose like children have been like underneath the car and they lift up a car and like they grab their kids, Superman style. Mm. All of a sudden this canoe, this child's canoe that just sank was full of water. And I uh, lifted, I like literally just grabbed this thing lifted it up oh my and gosh. like emptied it out like this. I'm not lying. Emptied the whole thing out, reset it, put my hand like on the ground, stabled myself in the canoe and started making my way out there. All of a sudden I'm halfway out. I'm like, you just hurt your back badly. All of a sudden the pain started to kick in. And it wasn't from lifting me. It wasn't no, it's from lifting you, <laughs> but you're easy to lift. That's why. And so, <laughs> and so meanwhile, I make my way out there and I like guide them in. So we, we make it back to shore. I can barely move. Like they had to lift me out of this canoe. And meanwhile, I, as you know, I've always, I've had back problems. I'd injured my back yeah. when I was younger a couple of times. Like it was from like a bad car accident. It was a bad, too. bad car accident. Um, but well, actually it was the first time I heard it was from catering. Um, number one from, Oh, and then, um, your from stairs lifting, from lifting, um, at the studio cases of alcohol from catering. And then, Working on Electric Lady Studios, we used to lift this tape See, machine. See, I listen. Yes. So there used to be four of us. We used to take a 500 pound, 500 plus pound tape machine up three flights of stairs. Which is the I don't think we don't know what a tape men. machine is. Tape machine back in the day 
when you would record an album, you would record on reel to reel. Just the tape alone, just their tape alone that you would record on had about what 15 minutes worth of music. It was two inch reel and it was 11 pounds each, just to give you an example. But imagine a whole tape machine. And this is a digital tape machine that had just come out, but still was reel to reel. And so this thing was about 500 plus pounds. Sounds very 1985. Um, Well, it was mid 90s, so not too far off from that. Yes. It was right before Pro Tools was really starting to make its way into the airwaves. Mm. Like at that time, Pro Tools was just launching and had uh, four tracks. And when you had Pro Tools on a computer at that time, that computer probably only had about 500 megs of storage. Not 500 gigs, 500 megs. Mm. It was crazy. So you'd always have to have like these hot swaps and these other drives. But anyway, so meanwhile... Gosh, I love when he talks tape deck. I know, there's nothing like a tape deck. It's like (sighs) real to real. It's like magnetic. It's sexy. It's great for bondage. It's like wonderful. So anyway... So, well, you can tie someone up with it, with the tape. Okay. Moving on, Gregory. Moving on. So anyway, back to my story. Rescue mission. Rescue mission. So we get back. They have to like basically lift me out of of this uh, canoe. I could barely move. Now you're being rescued. I was being rescued. So it was, um, so a few hours go by. I'm just, I'm shaking from the pain, actually, like shaking from the pain. And I'm like, I can tolerate this. I can tolerate it. And meanwhile, as you know, I'm allergic to Advil. Mm-hmm. So all I can ever take is Tylenol. And I've had surgeries where I have not been able to take any pain medication. I just have to sit there and suffer through. Yeah, you suffer I just suffer badly. through it and just deal and just take Tylenol, regular Tylenol. So I finally make my way to the doctor because I, um, I woke up. I just couldn't move. And I was like, my body was shivering from the pain. Go to a doctor. They conduct an x-ray. And I didn't do anything bad to my spine, which was good, but it was the muscle was spasming so badly. It was gripping my spine like this, the doctor said, really tightly. And so we're upstate um, in one of the states upstate. I'm not going to name which state it was, but a state known for prescribing opioids. And what does the Mm -hmm. doctor do? He gives me a muscle relaxer and Oxy. (gasps) Remember, he gave me Oxy. He gave me Oxy. Was it actually Oxy? I think it was was Oxy. And a muscle relaxer and told me to take them both. I told you not to take them. So I was in so much pain. I first start with the muscle relaxer. Well, I think I recommended just do the muscle relaxer. And then, but that actually wasn't relieving the pain at all. Mm. It wasn't actually, it might've been relaxing the muscle, but not handling the pain whatsoever. Yeah. So then I ended up taking the Oxy. And then I took it, I think, for like a day. And I was like, you know what? I, I don't like taking So when I had a surgery, um, which was actually, I've not had many surgeries. The surgery I had was a C-section. And, but my C-section was complicated when I had Karen. Mm-hmm. And um, they put me on Percocet, which Ooh. is another kind of opioid. opioid. I couldn't tolerate taking it mm-hmm. for more than the one dosage because... It made me want to throw up like and I like I have my I'm prone to migraines Mm -hmm. and I was like, I, I can't take this. And by the way, I had a C-section and they never even gave me Motrin in the hospital. They didn't even give you Motrin? They forgot to put it through. I remember you telling me the story and then your doctor finally showed up. She shows up. She was on vacation. Did she drop the F-bomb at like everyone? She was so mad appalled mm. because I also ended up with an infection on my C-section wound. I think she was appalled slash irate. And she was like, she didn't know that they hadn't been giving me anything in my drip. Mm-hmm. And she came in and she was squeezing out the infection from the point of Oof. Was incision. it like splattering different places? No, that only you do that. Oh, that happens. Um, She was squeezing it. And I thought I died. Like I literally was laying there like, and she goes, why do you feel this? And then she looked at the chart again and that, and she's like, oh my God, they aren't even giving you Motrin in this. And I was not on, I was on nothing. I was just suffering. Just suffering in pain. In pain. For more than 24 hours after surgery. 24? Ouch. It was. That hurts. Horrible. And in that time I had been given a baby to hold mm. then they forced me to get up and walk because they just want to kick you out of the hospital right yep. within less than 36 hours insurance yes and mm. goes back to pharma everything's outpatient yes goes back to pharma 
And which is so sad, which is, which is crazy. And so I, I think I took just one pill and I just, my body does not respond well to drugs of that nature, nor do I like them. Number one, even when I had my wisdom teeth taken out when I was like 15, the doctor gave me Vicodin. I didn't even take it. I'd rather just, just take some time at all. Just, I'll just deal with it. Maybe it was being a hockey player. I never and took being, anything like that. And I had four teeth removed from my yeah, mouth. Yeah, they removed four. He gave me, he made, cause I was in a lot of pain. Yeah. They gave, my dad told me just take Advil. I couldn't take Advil. No, no, no. Meaning I took Advil. Mm -hmm. Like, so maybe because you, it's like almost worse when you can't take, just maybe you should deal with the hives. That'd be worth it. With the hives. Yeah, I know. I get, unfortunately, I get hives when I, uh, when I take an Like if the side effect doesn't kill you. Yeah. It's probably worth it. Well, it's super uncomfortable because you need, and you have to take Benadryl on top of it. Then there's like more meds that you have to take. I mean, it's it's still safer. Take the meds to help with the meds. Still safer than the scary stuff. But what's even, it is safer than the scary stuff. But what's even crazy is when I, a couple of years ago, injured my foot running mm. and I had reconstructive foot surgery. If you remember, I woke up in the middle of the night. Um, oh, when you had the surgery. Yes. Yeah. The doctor had prescribed another painkiller. You said ants were crawling all over you. I, I felt, I woke up in the middle of the night. I could not sleep irritable. I felt like I had bugs all it's over horrible. me, crawling all over me. I remember that night. It was horrible. Reached out to the doctor instantly and she like pinged pretty quickly thereafter because it was in the middle of the night. She's like, stop taking these immediately. Like you're having an allergic reaction to them. And so she's like, the only thing you can take then is Tylenol. <laughs> so, there we so go. Were, so there I was stuck. So for me. Good old acetaminophen. Yeah. So, so thank God. I was, well, I was a catcher in baseball and a goalie in hockey. And so I've, I'm used to taking pain because back in the day, like goalies now, um, you the equipment, one, it's lighter and there's just, it's just better suited. Back in the day, there were gaps in the pads. And so there'd be time you take a slap shot and it's hitting bare skin, bare bone, bare everything. And so I was just in pain all the time. So am I allowed to beat you when I want and you can handle it? Isn't that why I don't cry now when you beat me? That's right. Shh. Shh. We just, we don't tell people that. Oh, I'm sorry. This yeah. was just made public. Shh. That's, that's not public consumption behavior. That isn't. No. It's inappropriate. Yeah. Nobody should beat anyone. Yeah. But I kind of like it. That's different. Mm. Are we talking mental abuse or are we talking physical abuse? Mental. Okay. I'm always mentally abusing. Mm. And physically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. So, but yeah, I know it's, that's kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah. But so I've been watching these movies. There's been a lot of them. Yes. But you want to know what's sometimes painful in a different degree? High school and college applications. Mm-hmm. Especially New York City high school applications. My daughter was just going through this whole process and your daughter went through it a couple of years ago that if you're not familiar with New York City, getting into high school is it's like as cumbersome and arduous as applying to college. To college. Because not only do you have to identify the schools you want to go to, you have to go on tours, you have to write essays. Write essays. And it's a different essay for each one of them. Then you may have to show portfolios of what you're doing and then go on or in interviews. And if you're lucky, you will be accepted to one of your top 12 schools that you've chosen. And if you do not get into any of those 12 schools, the city will just ship you somewhere it desires that it may ship you to. Well, it's a combination of things. There's like the Rubik's um, kind of algorithm and Mm. formula that the schools have established. So it's Mm -hmm. a combination of your preference, your grades, your statewide exams. There's a whole thing that goes Mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. So it isn't completely random, Mm. but... What does impact you is like the lottery number that you could be assigned as a student. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, your daughter has certainly went through this experience now. She has. And um, she may be going to Queens, which is good for her. Hopefully not. I mean, good luck to her. Good luck to her. She put a a school choice from Queens. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with the schools in Queens. It's more about the commute for a young young child. Um, Yes. Which is... Having to get out there by herself. Yeah, like, I mean, I kind of freaked out when my daughter had to go just up and downtown in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be comfortable with her going to Queens all the way at this age. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that she does not get into that school of choice in Queens. Yeah. I think they'll just make life a little more challenging for her and for just everyone involved. We tried Mm -hmm. to convince her otherwise, but... Well, she's got guidance from different sides. That's true, she does. And she's going to gonna go with the flow and see mm-hmm. where she lands but like high school is kind of a big step mm-hmm. for our younger one mm-hmm. and then 
the older one is going to be a junior this fall mm-hmm. in high school. And she started talking about colleges to me. But she's and been I talking think, about colleges for the last couple of years. No, but th- that's because we're nerds and we talk mm. about that stuff. But mm-hmm. she is serious now. Yeah. Like now it's like, like she started to she's mention. She's refining her choices. She's refining her choices, but it's some of the things that she's saying, like, Mom, this is my last summer doing this with you, or this mm. is I have two summers left, or Mom, we only have two more spring breaks left, or, like, it well, starts she's making to, it sound like she's never going to be, like, you know, your kid anymore. Meanwhile, like, you were just working with your parents to book a family trip. I know, but that that's different. Like, her being I my know. little kid. It's different because once they go to college, they're no longer your child anymore. No, she's still my child. Then you're making it sound like it's completely different. It's a very different relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of you feel like you have a different relationship with your child once they enter that new phase? I think it's a different phase. Mm -hmm. Well, it's always a different phase. You didn't. didn't, Well, I'm always telling people when you have a child, basically accept and enjoy and be part of every single one of those phases. Cause when they're young and they're born, like I always, you hear me talk about this, like as much as I am not a fan of being up at three 30 in the morning, taking care of a child, I miss those days of, you know, even just sleeping on my shoulder. And then all of a sudden they move on to a next phase and you kind of almost long for the phase beforehand and they've moved on and they've outgrown that. So it's definitely, I agree with you. There's definitely different phases that kids have. And when they move on to that next phase, you don't get that previous phase back and you kind of miss it. So I agree with you. I understand. You're going to make me cry. Why am I going to make you cry? Because I miss those phases. I know. I spent most of those phases just working all the time. Well, I mean, that's what we do. It's got to supply, you know, and take care of the kids. It makes me feel sad. Well, it's life. But they have their things like they're doing school. They have their extracurricular activities. They have their friends. It's not like they're just chilling out at home being like, yo, mom, I'm just going to stay here two, four, seven. So I could be with you the rest of my life. I mean, I mean if, we, more, if we raise them right, hopefully they're not. Yeah. Doing that. Or if it was an Italian family, she'd be like still sleeping with you in bed. Uh, yeah, that's what they do. I've had relatives. You've heard stories. Yeah, apparently I have relatives that I I know them quite well, but I didn't realize the situation that apparently... The situation. The situation. <laughs> apparently the two brothers um, used to sleep in bunk beds in the same room and uh, their sister uh, apparently slept in the same bed as uh, their mother. And I'm talking like not when they're like 10, 12, 16, 18. I heard stories that, like while they're in their 40s. No. Yeah. Yes. 40s? 40s. My sisters can corroborate this story, but um, yes, that's that's what happens in the. That's why I'm only part Italian. Because the other why it's better 50%, with the British and the Austrian side. I don't know. Yeah, because we help to liberate. Uh, no, that is that is not really mm. what the world is dealing with right now. Mm. Nothing about the British liberating has been beneficial to current day society at this moment. Well, because it's exhausted its time period and now it needs to come back into, into vogue. What? Yeah. No. Yes. Mm. No, 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 no. Mm. I don't know. But how do we get into this talking about kids? Oh, talking about missing. Because I'm sad. I'm going to be, you should be sad. I'm going to be an empty nester in two years, guys. You know, I was sad. You hear me tell this story every once in a while when we talk about like being young. And for me, I'm the youngest in my family of, of three. And remember, we've talked about this. My sister, Kim, getting married when I was 11 because she was significantly older than well, me. Well, that's because and I was all like sad. I love your, I love your sisters yeah. very much. You know that. But they're like my mom's age. My eldest sister is your mom's age. So... <laughs> I mean, we're talking like They're really talking like boomers, right? That's technically yeah, boomers, boomer like gen. really different generations. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Where are you going with this? I don't know. I just had to say that. <laughs> so you're talking about boomer generations, my eldest sister being your mom's age. Okay. And my middle sister, obviously younger than your mom. So where are you going with this? Well, it, it makes it makes sense that you're so special and you got like weird special feelings and I am a special being. I'm a special individual. I am a special being. I am what's called the chosen one. 
Oh, thank you. Oh, this is what the kids do when we have to calm a family member down because they might have had a. They may be a little exasperated for a moment. Yes, they they might be, and they need a little calming down. So we have a routine in the family that instead just, of yelling, instead of yelling, we just help them calm. We down. pet. We pet. Yes. It's called pet treatment. Pet treatment. Apparently, it has uh, grown in adoption ever since we introduced it in an earlier pod and is now being taught in Harvard medical classes. That is not true. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's totally true. I was just reading HBR, Harvard Business Review, recently, and they were talking about this new method that explains oh. um, the way to calm down an individual, and they basically take an individual through hmm. the exact velocity, speed, hmm. and cadence, and tone, and volume, decibel volume, of the way that this needs to happen oh. in order to reset the human psyche so that person has now recalibrated themselves and now is feeling more comfortable with whom I, they are in that moment, I, in that situation and time. I see. Um you said so many words that took me nowhere that you lost my focus. It's quite all right. I'm trying to what help educate you. What are we talking you about again? About how beautiful you are. That is not what we were talking That's about. That's what we are just talking about. No, nope. I was just talking about how pretty you are. We were talking about your um, incorrect statement that Harvard Business Review has made a reference to our shushing mm. methodology. No, why don't you go take a look? It's kind of like when the Sackler family used that research. Wait, why are we saying dirty words like that? Well, because remember there was that huge... That's a dirty word. I know, but remember that massive research study that they referenced to show how OxyContin is just... That less than 1%. That non-addictive. Yeah. By the way, we're being sarcastic. Like It's like one sentence in a journal that was like written as an opinion piece. The medical piece. journal. Yes, a medical journal that was written by someone as an opinion piece to like ask a question of something of that nature. And they quoted it as a major study. So That defended their... That defended their Viability claims. to yes. sell the drugs the way they did. And yes. Anyway, yes. I have no idea how we're talking about pharmaceutical companies and our children all in the same topic, but we've managed well, to well, accomplish you wonder why? that. Well, we've, we've accomplished it because of the, the, the challenges that one might face when... Um, living in society in this day and age, but then also because it's an epidemic, it was affecting children too. It certainly was. It's, yeah, yeah. Scary. It's really kind of scary. It's, it's very, very scary. scary. Well, they have a new thing that we have to be worried about for our kids. Like mm -hmm. fentanyl has come back, but as hard candy and mm. ketamine as well. And it's served as little candy hearts. Special K, ketamine. It's so scary. Yeah. Although we know people that administer. I like told our daughters like last year, like do not take candy yeah. from anyone yeah. and eat it. But, but we know people who administer ketamine. Well, those are psychiatrists. Yeah, That's for med medicinal reasons. But those are psychiatrists. They are psychiatrists. They know what yes. they're doing. They're giving people club kid drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the drug. That was the drug of choice by the club kids back in what the 80s. Special wow. K, ketamine. I think that's horse tranquilizer, right? Yeah, I was right? going to say, don't you knock out a horse with that? Yeah. So one of the hairstylists that I used to have, uh, her name is Hangout, awesome hairstylist. And then so she took my hair from being like literally below my shoulders to like take it up short for the first time I had cut short in a while. And so I was use, utilizing her services for quite some time and she had changed a couple of salons and now it's just too far to get to her. But one of the salons she introduced me, which I didn't realize that she was part of the club, the club kid circuit. And she introduced me to one of the other club kids oh. um, that was at her salon. I think his name was Nit Nitro. I think his name was Nitro. I don't know these this guy. He had um, You're half way of his head was blonde and the other half was dark. And so we were talking, we were chatting with him one day and we were talking about it. And I believe they had gone to um, pick up Michael Alec when he was like getting out of jail. Who's Michael Alec? Michael Alec is the head of the club kids, the one who killed Angel. How, why would I know killed this? Angel, who was the why? drug dealer. Why would I know this? Oh. What about me because gives you the perspective you claim, that oh, I have this knowledge? I'm more New York City than any of you. I was born in Greenwich I Village. I was five when the shit was going down. Why so would what? I know about that? I thought it? you would know about pop culture. You, you talk about pop I culture. I only know the pop culture that I live, not mm -hmm. like, and maybe I read in New York Magazine or something, mm. but they're not talking about uh, this. I thought you were more culture than that. I don't know. It was on like Phil Donahue and all those shows. Okay, used that's to bring on the not club kids. culture. 
Oh my what are you talking God. about? That's Phil, Phil that's Donahue? Phil it's like Donahue. Watch, it's like watching Geraldo Riviera. Rivera, yeah. Or Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer was actually a very well-respected lawyer at one point. Oh my gosh. And he was able to capitalize and turn everything he has into if a show. If no one else comes back to see an episode, me know why now. Yes, because of Kirthi's lack of knowledge and because pop culture. Because Greg yeah. decides to go down a rabbit hole. What rabbit hole? So talking about a rabbit hole. So back to Hangout her name and so she was telling me she remembered her name was hangout hangout yeah she goes by hangout that's not her real name but that's her like her, her name. fake name her, yeah her pseudonym oh my God. that's her pseudonym and so uh hangout and so she was telling me the story one time how she remembered being i guess at michael alex back in the day mm. and there was this really bad odor that was there which was believed to be the rotting corpse of Angel that was still in the apartment before it was identified. Okay. It's crazy. That sounds I'm disgusting. not even the one from New York. Okay, I, I don't know these bad people who do sinister activities. I'm sorry. Mm. I grew up in a much more sheltered lifestyle. Yes, in Staten Island. Yes. Yes. Staten Island. Shut up. What? I'm not making fun of it. You are making fun of it. No, it's not. I beat you up. How am I making... Are you going Wu-Tang on me now? I'm going to go Wu-Tang yeah, on you. Yeah, you can't even name all the Wu-Tang members, so... Mm. Yeah, exactly. Thought so. Staten Island. Take your Christina Why Aguilera you and go somewhere. you out like that all the time? Well, because, you know, you claim you're Staten Island. Well, you but... also claim you're from over the border. Yeah. What's... Dick. I don't see what do you mean over the border. All right, let's do our thing. We're wait, playing wait, a game, right? Wait, what do you mean over the border? You call yourself, I'm from over the border. No, <laughs> just no, just right over the border. <laughs> oh, my God. You make me fun of vomit. Okay, let's <laughs> play a game. Why did it make you want to vomit? Why are you making fun of me? Where's our game? You told me you're playing a game. That's how you got me to do this episode with you. Yeah, like strip poker? N no. Oh. Then what are we playing? We're playing the voting game. Wait, what's the voting game? I'm going to get it out. Wait, let me find it. I'm going to go find the voting game quickly because we did not pull this bend. out in advance. You better find it. Oh, you want me to bend? Right there. Oh. It's in the game box. The game, bo oh, the game box. Oh, the game box. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's a lot of places I can go with that. Okay, let's get the game out, Gregory. <laughs> well, are we? Are, well, the game box, I'm assuming we're playing baseball. No. All right, <laughs> 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 All right, we are back. The voting game. Let's see. Let's show everyone this. This, okay. is, this is the... The voting game. How do you play this game? I don't know. I just got us a new game. Find out who your friends are. Yeah, let's see if Greg's my friend. Yeah. So the one so, thing. Oh, I was gonna say one quick one quick thing is that um, for Christmas, uh, this wasn't a Christmas gift this year, but one thing we always believe in buying the kids for Christmas is a form of a game. So we bought them a few board games this this Christmas. Every that's that reminds me of being a kid. I always got a board game as Thank a kid you for that up. announcement, honey. You're welcome. I'm trying to read the instructions. Okay. Thank you. So read them, will you? I thought we could actually play a game. And this is apparently the relationship expansion pack Ooh. of Stranger Things. I mean, not Stranger Things. That's a movie. Um, What's more romantic than being understood? Hmm. That's interesting. It's a relationship expansion pack. Yes. Huh. So I thought that could be fun. Sure. Let's give it a shot. Does it get dirty? Gregory. It's the only type of game I like. You know that. Oh, my Lord. What do I, I do know. with you? Oh, you know what you love to do with me. So how do we play this game? Uh, we can mix the cards. Oh, this is the one where, um, yes. Can we make up our own rules? No. No? Oh. All right. Okay, so this is, ooh, there's level one, level two. Yeah. What do I do? So, Give this to you? Well, we each have to pick a card. Okay, there we go. There's one for you. There's one for me. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, do yes. you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You go first. Greg, mm. how important do you think birthdays and holidays are to me? Explain. They're extremely important to you because you have them planned several months in advance and you're sort of a pain in the ass um, about it. And if it's not done um, at the way that you want to do it, at the speed you want it done and planned in the way that you want it planned, um, it's a very uncomfortable situation. Oh, gosh. All right. And if, yeah, and if Kirthi doesn't think that there's something going on for her birthday, which might be a total surprise, 
she'll just take it upon herself and plan something else. So then your guests are confused. They're like, what party am I going to? Am I going to the party that you're throwing to her as a surprise? Or am I going to the party that she threw for herself on the same day at the same time? I don't throw a party for myself. Well, sometimes you like try to I've step in. I've actually never thrown a party for well, myself. You know what? You try to step in and be like, well, then I'm inviting people. So you're making up shit. No, it's, you don't know how to manage surprises because you're such a planned individual that you're like, oh, well, I guess nothing's happening for my party. It's like, you can't keep anything a surprise with you. Yes, okay. I thought so. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I went there. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, it's a compliment, too, because you're a very planned person. Mm-hmm. Mm. Who do you think was more nervous on our first date? Explain. You. No. You were shitting your pants trying mm-hmm. to even talk to me. So untrue. You were trying to figure out how to say my name. Then you were trying to figure out, like... What do you... No, what and are then you, you were like, about? "Oh, she's newly divorced. She may not be ready for this." That's so not true. And then you went in for the kill. I, I've been saying your name correctly ever since I first met you, Curti. That is not how you say my name. Kirti. Okay. Karate. All right, next card. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh wait, your turn. There you go. Level one. Perception. Hmm. Hmm. As a follow up. Ooh, let's see it. What do you think my Perfect date night would be. Ooh. I would like to hear. Your perfect date night. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I would say. This is a great way to kick off the year so we can actually manage expectations, guys. Yes. I think your perfect date night would be choosing a, well, the, I could go multiple areas with this. Mm. I'm going to take one scenario because there's multiple scenarios. Okay. I think you have okay. you have different variations of what could be perfect. Ah. So I think a perfect date night would be um, the two of us going somewhere where maybe we start with a um, a drink just to like casually chill. Then we have some great food because food is very important to us. Some place that's very Especially yummy and tasty. And a doesn't necessarily have to be a certain style of food, just some place that's really good. Um, then knowing you, we would probably then want to go from there and knowing me too, go for a walk after dinner, then maybe see some live music or stop somewhere else. Um, and then potentially even meet up with some friends afterwards for some like late night fun and then go home and then we'll leave the rest up to everyone's imagination. That does sound like the perfect date to me. Mm. The other version is just ordering in and doing all of the same. Uh, that's so. That's so I was. That's exactly why I was saying there's different variations. That would be the going out um, version. The other would be opening up a bottle of champagne and like ordering in some great food and chilling and watching a movie. I agree. That would be the other one. You do know what I want. Of course I do. What was the first thing? You noticed about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first thing. First thing was your rhinestone studded belt. Rhinestone studded belt. I, I thought it's pretty hot. I thought you were like a farmer. I wasn't a farmer. I was like a rock and roller coming off of like CBGBs off of a runway. Except somewhere. it was accompanied with a plaid shirt. So I really thought farmer. I just walked off of the runway on from Milan. I just arrived in the States and arrived at this event. So that was my first impression. And first thing I noticed. Mm-hmm. About how fashionable I was and currently still am. Mm. Mm. There you go. Let's see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What, what was that was like Beyonce's little <laughs> in uh in what was that song? Oh, where she's talking about riding a surfboard. Surfboard. What assumption did you make about me that turned out to be false? Oh. Why is I'm that funny? I'm so curious to hear your response for this. What wait, why why are you laughing? So an assumption about you that turned out to be false. Hmm. I think all of my assumptions um, about you were correct. Really? Can you name one? Can you think of one? It's supposed to be your assumption of me. An assumption of you that turned out to be false. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. An assumption. This is a hard question. 
Because I'm not sure what, because I'm very good at reading people mm. and understanding and knowing who they are. Mm. So I feel like I'd be making something up right now. Oh. Yes. Um, I would say. You got to answer it though. An assumption that turned out to be false. Mm. I'm torn. I'm really stuck. I'm really stuck on this one because there's so many different areas I could be facetious and like just start making up things and say, oh, you come across as this stern sort of like B-I-T-C-H. You, you called me a narcissist in the last episode. Yeah, but that was joking around. I don't really think you're a narcissist. You said it 10 times. No, I know. You're worse than a narcissist. That's why we take you to therapy and we give you special K. It's okay. Padam, I know the prescription. We have to up it a little bit more next time. Yes. Padam, 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 padam. That Kylie Minogue song. That Kylie Minogue song. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you don't know who Padam is, Padam is our brother-in-law who owns a very successful uh, psychiatric. Uh, psychiatric franchise in the Miami uh, region. So I'm going to say... you got to answer the question. You're okay. taking forever. I know, because I don't really know. Timer. I, I mean, we're the I timer know. On it's the only The easy thing would be to say is maybe you could come across as someone who um, someone might think maybe is arrogant, but you're not arrogant. Are you making that up? Yes. Okay. But I think you do come across as a strong woman. Oh, I'll say this. I would say in the business world, you are a strong woman. Um, you're stern, you're particular. And when you work with people, um, you are trying to pull out of them their very best and you're strong and you protect your team and everything. But I think w when one could think of that way, we've had this conversation in pods before where sometimes strong women in business are thought to be bitches, right? Whereas men, in, when you're strong in, in, in business, you're like, oh, he's a strong man. Where I think maybe um, one could think that, oh, Maybe she's a, a bitch when really you're a gentle, kind, loving human being. Oh. Okay. Pick your card. <laughs> That's because I don't like to say anything bad about you. And like, there's nothing that I can think of that was wrong. On a scale of one to 10, how open do you feel I am with you? Explain. How appropriate is that after that question? You're 10. I'm very open. I'm very open. Yes. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Yes. Yes, you do. That's it? Just like no explanation? It doesn't say explain. Okay. It doesn't I say think explain. No, it's not explain. Yeah, explain. Greg, it's a 10. You're exceptionally open with me. You share with me your deepest, darkest desires. Mm. You also are very open with me and share with me when you're uncomfortable or when you don't want to communicate. I feel you. Mm. I'm connected to your sensories. Thank you. You're like a living opioid. <laughs> 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 what would a day of completely spoiling me look like? I love these Ooh. cards that I keep getting. Uh, that would be waking up, making you a fresh homemade omelet. Then from there, with like sautéed onions, peppers, throw some Indian spices in there. It's like beautiful. Then throw egg white in there. And then with like a little bit of sourdough toast and then do that. Then it would be uh, hitting the spa and going for like beautiful therapeutic massages. For, Nothing like having the eggs rolled out of you. Yeah, rolled out of you. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Like for like a two-hour, not like regular massage, but like a therapeutic massage. And then afterwards, we have like a light, you know, lunch turned into dinner. Mm. And then we would, uh, you know, come back and then chill with friends and stay family. That is a lovely day. That's a lovely day. I also like watching movies on the sofa in pajamas. You do like that too. But that was like the, the same thing as before on the dating. So I know. I'm very simple. I know. I, I'm really not that. Uninteresting, but I am mm -hmm. at the same time. Well, you want to like because we're always doing something. It's like nice to just be able to like chill and do nothing. Yes. Yes, we agree. 
to find the partner that you could actually do nothing with and still have a good time, mm-hmm. that is the key to life. I agree. I 100% agree with you. you. Don't have to always do something. No, we don't always do it. I agree. We just like to chill at times too when we can get a little break, especially when, you know, when we're by ourselves and have like a little break from society. Yes. The hardest thing for me to reveal about myself to you was? About? You have to put this in the first person here. The hardest thing for me to reveal about myself to you was? Hmm. Are you stumped? (laughs) You might be stumped. Um, Stump it. That you had never dated brown chicks before me. Wow. Let me see. Is that true? That's what you told me. I think that and might be true. And you were very awkward when you told me. What do you mean I was awkward? You were like... That was, that was a conversation. <laughs> It sounds like a prepubescent boy trying to like chat up a girl for the first time. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) when really translated means, I think you're very cute. Will you go out on a date with me? And I would like to uh, kiss you. Uh, That's not really what you said, but no, I just translated it. And that, I'm telling you, that's not what, what was said to me. No, I'm not saying what was said to you. I'm just I was translating the prepubescent your, boy. Trying your to ask language. Me. What do you mean my language? I speak multiple different languages. Mm. Mm. Whose turn is it? Mine. Oh, I forgot. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. How does our age difference or lack thereof affect us, if at all? It does not affect us one bit. I know, because now you're not with an old woman. (laughs) You're finally dating someone age appropriate. (sighs) Yes, I concur with you. (laughs) There's nothing I can say. What's the most romantic thing I've done for you recently? Oh, gosh, you do a lot of romantic things. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I mean... This was like very new and very simple, but Mm. it was so like romantic to my perspective. Mm -hmm. I came home uh, from my first day of my new job just Mm -hmm. last week and you had like bought these gorgeous purple flowers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what those flowers are called. Mm -hmm. And they were just so beautiful. They were sitting there and then you were like, oh, I want to get dinner for you. And it was just like, we had taken care of the kids and it was really romantic and really sweet and thoughtful mm-hmm. and just exactly what I needed. I'm quite poetic. Yes. I mean, not to also add, mm-hmm. but add like it's really freaking romantic when you write music about mm-hmm. us too, mm-hmm. which is really endearing. I do do that. <clears throat> I pour my guts out. You do. In my heart. I know, even though I'm such a vile, mean woman. I know, you're horrible sometimes. She's so bad. Oh, she's so mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm scarred. Mm. Okay, next one. What's one small way I can be a better partner? Wait, that's you answering that to me. Whoa. Hmm. I could probably name a couple. I'm just joking. Wait. I think I'm answering that for you. Like no. you're asking me what small way no, like is, I can be a better partner. No, this is you reading it in the first person. No, Greg. What's that's one you small asking way? Me. No, I think okay. Well then you're fine. trying to switch the no, game. No, then card. fine. Then 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 flip it. Then flip it. You know that there's no way I can be a better partner in this way. What are you looking at me like that for? I mean, you could get rid of the extra baggage. <laughs> but that's not up to me. That's the New York City court system. That shows how anti the the court system is the most antiquated like system known to modern day anything. And 
in another life, I want to be a divorce attorney because it's the only industry that I've seen thus far that you can, they don't call it lying in the court system. They call it misrepresenting. It's the only time I've been able to see misrepresentations take place for years and promising a judge and essentially lying to a judge month on month on month and still no repercussions or implications or anything and you still get paid. I want to be a divorce attorney in my next life in New York City because the court just doesn't end it. And so you just keep getting paid and you keep lying to the court. I've never had a, I've the court, never had a and job okay with it. where I keep getting paid when I don't deliver my... I know, that's what I'm saying. Things. It's the best job you can have. You don't deliver and you get paid. And the court system, the judge doesn't even reprimand you. They say, okay, next time. Okay, next time. I know, we're giving too much airwaves to this. I know. I want a boss that says, okay, next time, for like years straight without delivering one thing. For nine years. No. So anyway, let's move on. Is that oh, my card? Yeah, that's your card. Wait, let's change that. Because you saw the question. I saw a word attractive on there. Here. I didn't see the question. What did our worst argument teach you? <laughs> to shut the fuck up. No. No, but like, really? What do we argue about? Like raw onions? We order... No, not even about raw onions. We order... <laughs> no. No, the raw onions are not something we argue about. It's just like, oh, I'm not going to kiss you tonight. You're not going to sleep in bed tonight because you're going to stink of onions. But it's more the, uh, when you like decide to cook some onions, like that's come this story that's come up a couple of times. And like, I didn't actually have it at that moment in time with my food or like, I'm not eating chicken Hold when you on, want me to eat chicken. you're talking about my precious caramelized onions? Yes. So most of the, the, most of the arguments we have have to do with food. food. Oh, I know when you just don't order something for us to eat and you want me to decide all the time. No, it's not that I want you to, because you're more picky. I'm willing to no, eat. No, 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 no. Yeah, you are picky. But, Don't even give me that bullshit. I might be, I might be picky. You're so but picky. There, I might you're be, like, today I will not eat anything with egg, but I will eat shrimp. Today I am not in a bread mood, but I will eat bread. <laughs> Look, I had Thai three nights in a row for you just now. Yeah, listen, bitch. It's yes. Thai is so good. Mm-hmm. And I think I have Thai in me. Mm, you might. Want some Thai, Thai? No, I'm gonna, we're going to have Indian tonight. Yes, we are going to have for the Indian holiday. It's, it's, no, that was two weeks ago. Oh, that was two weeks ago. That's right. Oh, that's, But there's probably another Indian holiday. Today. Yeah, probably. There's. I mean, they're like every other week. Yeah, pretty it's much. Like, you know, Indian holidays, Jewish holidays, Muslim holidays. It's like you can't keep up with them. And the Catholics just pretend to have holidays. No, we have like three three like holidays over the course of the year. Three, year. really? Maybe a couple more. Okay, whatever. Go on. Christmas, before, Easter, Good before Friday. I like go. Bah. Ash Wednesday is not even a holiday. But, all right, yeah, all right. Let's see. Ooh, a wild card. Yeah, we're not doing this one. It hmm? Involves writing. We're not going to write down anything. Oh. What did this conversation teach you about our relationship? What did it teach you about yourself? It has taught me that you are well trained. Mm -hmm. You understand your role in our relationship. Oh, really? And that. You know how to continuously make me happy. I agree. I had grown up exactly knowing how to treat my harem. And, you know, I let them do certain things and then I have to reprimand them and punish them at other times. And so you're right. I have been trained to, um, in other words, manage the women in my life correctly. Manage the women in your life? Yes, manage women correct. You know, manage women correctly in I my life. I think Carol is rolling her grave here And in this. you're exactly right that I have taken a leadership position in making sure that you all are managed accordingly. That's messed up. Hmm. Well, I'm just saying. Hmm. There you go. Huh. Well... This is actually a good wild card. Oh. This one says, think of one of our favorite memories from our relationship in 30 seconds and compare. Ooh. It's hard. There's so many good ones. There's like five that just popped into my head. I know. It's really hard for me to come up with just one. Um. I'm just going to put one out there that's like, obviously, it'd probably be trite or an easy one. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Okay. The uh, mm. one I proposed to you. 
I thought that was a very special moment. I mean, that was very, that was super special moment. That's definitely in my list. Mm -hmm. We played music together. Gosh, how am I supposed to come up with one? Mine is going to be very specific. Okay. Mine's going to be St. Kitts. Mm, that was a great trip. Us uh, sitting at that restaurant on the beachfront, listening to live music. And we like literally had like no other distractions or things consuming our mind Not or our like airwaves at that moment and we just enjoyed that warm breeze and the music and we just like food. really just had such a good time mm -hmm. i agree that was a great spot that was that was a such great a trip good time that was a great trip was that a hyatt that we stayed in it was the park hyatt yeah the park hyatt if you ever go to st kitts we recommend the park hyatts like these bungalows like right on the beach it's so beautiful it's gorgeous the way they set up the hotel it doesn't feel like a hotel it just feels like it's built into the landscape yeah it's gorgeous absolutely it was gorgeous. such a great time and that night we had dinner at that place right next door yep i know exactly what you're talking about that was fun that was a good time and great of course memory. the engagement is amazing mm -hmm. you were freaking amazing how you thank proposed you. to me thank you that just happened to pop into mind along with other things but, but there's just so many there's so many we have a lot of great moments we have a lot of great So moments. many. All right. Is this our last card? I think this is our last card, and this is a very important card uh -oh. to conclude with. What made you fall in love with me? <laughs> <laughs> well, outside of all mm. your amazingness. Yes, thank you. You're kind. You're sweet. Boring. No, a lot of men who are good looking like you are not kind and sweet mm. at the core. You're actually kind and sweet. Thank you. And you come across maybe arrogant, mm -hmm. but you're not. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the thing that made me kind of just totally fall for you was the way you play drums. I'm sorry, but when you get behind the drum kit and you just start playing music and creating those sonic waves towards everyone. Mm -hmm. And I feel it like in my heart and my gut. It's incredible. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. For anyone that hasn't seen me play yet, um, <clears throat> you can ask any band member or anyone that's actually seen me play and, when I play, the whole room apparently shakes and Gosh. you just you feel the kick drum in your heart and in your body. Yeah. It does. There's so I've many re there's so many reasons to love you. Thank you. Oh. It's like countless. Thank you. Oh. It'll bring a tear to my eye. I making me cry. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Well that concludes our game, right? That was the last card in the yes. game. I'm gonna put these over here. And so that might, you know. Bring our, you know, show to a uh, close down? on this one. We're closing it out. Yeah. Is there any final thoughts? We talked about opioid addiction, <laughs> TV shows, <laughs> kids getting into high school and college and the challenges there. We've talked about vacations, family, food, culture. We played a game where we had to identify attributes of one another and what we thought about yeah. experiences. Is there any advice for the audience that you can give? I think it's don't let outside environmental factors ever influence the choices you make. Hmm. I think people can let outside elements jade them or control them or mm -hmm. shade their perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to even our previous episode of be true to your values. Mm hmm for those small decisions and the big ones. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Yeah, I think it's um, it's always easier said than done, which is to always, and we're you know in the new year now, appreciate what you have. I think that's the hardest thing to do in life is appreciate what you have and versus always longing for something more, something different. Yeah. Concept of the grass is greener on the other side. It's not always greener. It's, it's 
very rarely. Sometimes it is. Yeah, sometimes in certain situations. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, appreciate life, appreciate health, appreciate family, appreciate hard work. Yeah. You know, it comes back to even our conversation with Chris Shembra back in December yeah, and about having gratitude, right? And paying it forward. And you can have gratitude in general towards people, but also maybe have it for yourself. Yeah. Don't ever like overlook yourself. Because you have to be strong so you can be strong for others. Correct. Because health starts here, right? Yep. And if you're not healthy, you can't be healthy for others. And love starts here. Love does start there. Well. For yourself. It might start down there, but... Oh my God. Okay. That's a wrap. Bats!